you got here? Uh, I have an antique magic prop for you guys, actually. A what? This is a Thurston sawing in half box. An original antique piece of magic. What are you going to do, saw me in half? I can. No, I'm OK. One chum's enough. I came to the pawn shop today to sell my antique magic sawing in half box. It's taken up a lot of space, and I could use the money. I'd like to get somewhere around two or three grand for it. So where did you get this? Uh, this was actually given to me by a friend who passed away. And he told me that it was owned by Thurston, who at the turn of the century was one of the biggest magicians. Oh, yeah, Howard Thurston was a huge star back then. He was one of the first magicians to actually bring magic into, uh, like, a proper theater. Yeah, Thurston was one of the guys who pretty much made magic a big business. God, didn't he have, like, eight train cars or something that he would take into a town? A massive show. There was, you know, a couple hundred people involved with it. It was a big deal. Absolutely. I just think it's a really cool piece because before Thurston, no one had ever seen a woman sawing in half. This is the original sawing in half prototype. I don't know if Howard Thurston invented this trick, but he's the one who brought it to the US and actually made it really popular. I mean, it's probably one of the big, you know, magician staples out there. This thing can be pretty dangerous. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, people definitely got hurt the first time around using this stuff. Is that dried up blood on those blades? Uh, that's probably a little bit of everything dried up. But the uh, girl, or sometimes even a spectator, would lay down. And you can see where there's a, a hole for their hands up here. And then their head would come out through here. And then their feet would come down at the other end. So they could, actually, the audience could see their feet, their hands, and their head the entire time they were being sawn in half. That's crazy. So Chum, you want to get inside here and see if it works? Hell no. I don't think you guys are professionals. If Corey thinks I'm going to get into this death trap, he's got another thing coming. It would definitely be cool if it actually belonged to Thurston. Do we have anything backing up that it actually belonged to him? I've got nothing. I mean, there's some pictures on the internet that look very similar. OK. Um, what do you want to do with it, pawn it or sell it? I'd like to sell it. Any idea of how much you want to get? Two or three grand, I think. If it is something that's collectible, we could probably do some business. Let me give my buddy a call and have him come down here. He's a magician here in town and might be able to shed some light on it. Perfect. If this turns out to be a box that Thurston actually owned, it'd be a piece of magic history. And it can be big time money. Murray, what's happening? Hey, guys, what's up? Look, he has some furniture in here. Thinks it that? may have belonged to Thurston at one point. Wow. Not everybody can become a magician. It's one of those things where you really got to have a lot of love for the art, because those beginning years, you don't get paid. Thurston was the greatest and the biggest magician in American history in the early 1900s. But the first person to invent the song and half box was a guy named P.T. Selbit, an English magician in London. OK. Um... So should we test this thing out before we go any further? You know, I think we should test this thing out to see if it actually works. And uh, I mean, but we do need someone to go in the box. I mean, we got to cut somebody in half. Should I get the old man? How about you? Who? I'll cut you in half. Me? Yeah. What do you think? You going to buy me lunch? Done. All right. Done. Shake on it. As a magician, I never reveal my secrets, but a lot of people have a lot of speculation on how things are done. And uh, I think that's what keeps the mystery uh, going on. I don't know about this, guys. Corey, mm -hmm. grab the saw. We're going to cut them in half. Ready? There's right. no going back right now, is it? Here we go. Ah! All right, let's try the blades. You want to uh, pull his head a little bit? Yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> now let's just try this. Hang on, chum. We'll just turn it here. Oh, yeah. Chum, wiggle your feet. I can't feel my feet. Chum, we're putting you back together, all right, man? Please. Here we go. Is it lined up? Awesome. You good? Ugh. There he is. Ooh. One piece. I think Chum could be an amazing assistant, could be an understudy for any of my dancers in the show. So did this actually belong to Thurston or not? If this is really Thurston's, this would be worth between sixteen and $21,000. It looks very similar to Thurston's, you know, with the design, this kind of stained glass effect. Uh, the verdict on this box, it's definitely not Thurston's box. These latches here, nothing opens up here. 
Okay. Couldn't have been Thurston's because this would unlock. So this whole wall could actually drop forward. So you can actually see the person in here. You can tell these were actually added on here as uh, decoration. Okay. So what do you think it might be worth? Honestly, it's probably worth its weight in wood. <laughs> Well, my man, uh, if it was Thurston's, I would have been happy to buy it off you, but I'm not even going to make you an offer, man. Thanks. Take care, buddy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. A lot of fun, guys. You want to go grab that lunch, Murray? All right, let's do it. So, it sucks that it's not real. I mean, I think I'm going to take the box home. I might even uh, cut it down and make it into a coffee table, because it's still a really cool-looking prop.